Welcome to the Rugby Player's Guide to France, made just for you by Brightrock, a series of top South African rugby exports who spent time playing the game in France, look back at life on and off the rugby field and what it was like moving abroad to play the bounce in a new part of the world. Welcome to the Rugby Player's Guide to France and the busy hum of morning traffic in Paris outside one of the most iconic stores in Europe, Galerie Lafayette, full of luxury and designer products that I'll never be able to afford but can certainly lust over. I explored this for the first time I came to Paris and it's somewhere I suspect our next guest has spent a bit of time in. He's a particularly stylish type and he knows Marseille better than most. Welcome to the Rugby Player's Guide to France, made just for you by Brightrock, as we catch up with a series of great South African rugby players who've discovered the joys of life on and off the pitch in their time playing in France. And one of the many great exports we have sent over to France is Jean-André Kruger, who I remember when I gave you a call and I just mentioned France, I could hear your voice lighting up. You've got such a love for this second home of yours. Yes, bonjour, Dan. It's great to have a bit of a chat to you about great old memories in France. Tell me about the, the journey over. What was it like just discovering France and making a new life for yourself over there? Yes, yeah, so I was there for six and a half, seven years. Um, I had a wonderful time. I had three kids born in France. And um, yes, we traveled the world, you know, from France and, you know, experienced. I never really got into the, uh, the French frog legs and those things, but the food, the yeah. wine, the experience, the sport, was, uh, it was incredible. That life aspect of a new country, soaking it all up as you so clearly did, almost seems as valuable, if not more so, than the rugby experience. Yes, definitely. Um, you know, that exciting part of it, learning a new language. Um, they, they say, you know, it's the language of love, the French and things like that. So, um, but to able to travel and experience that country, you know, it's a, it's a special country. Um, it's a great language, a very difficult language to learn. I was fortunate to, you know, put a lot of time into it and learn it and play with a bunch of great players in France. And, you know, we went on, I think, 2016, we went on winning the French Top 14, which was special. And it's memories that will stick with you forever. You talk about travelling the country. Not too far down the road from your second club was Marseille. I've been to Marseille very briefly. Such an electric city the time I spent there. What are your memories of Marseille? Yes, so Marseille is, um, you know, when you look at the way the people speak in French, you've got the um, the French, they say du pain, du pain, you know, so it's a, it's a bit of a, like a slang in the language, but the Springboks will be playing out there, they'll be playing Tonga, so, you know, around Marseille, it's great places, there's Cassis, which is basically the, the French Saint-Tropez, it's a beautiful place to visit, it's, you know, there's a lot of character to it, um, the food's great, um, it's a really relaxed vibe, the, the south compared to Paris, which is a busy city, so, and Marseille, as well, you know, it's got great, you know, harbours um, and, you know, the boats are lying there. There's a great vibe and things around Marseille and the south of France. So time in the south, time in Paris as well. Given the choice of lifestyle, which one would you take if you went back? I think it's a, it's a very, I get that question a lot. So, um, you know, when I, when I lived in Paris, you know, we, we, we lived there for one or two years without having kids and, you know, it's, a, it's more of a city um, vibe. And um, when we moved down to the south, by that time, we, you know, we had another two kids born, so we had three kids in the south. So, um, I'll, I'll, you, know, I'll get, you know, I'll get a lot of messages if I say I prefer the south to, have, to, to Paris. Both are very special. Um, de it depends on what, you know, a part of your life you are in. Um, and... Um, but I really enjoyed the South. Um, you, you know, the you know having Cannes, Antibes, Monaco, Marseille, Cassis. It's a it's a great area, um, and you know you've got the Monaco Grand Prix going on. There's great golf courses as well. You've got a little bit more like a Cape Town weather type, and um, so the South is a great place for uh, you know a family or even a couple just to travel down. You've got Saint Paul de Vence. It's a very you know it's a very special place, the South of France. So lots of wonderful memories. You also left plenty of great memories with your fans who watched you, and there were many. Tell me a bit about the rugby culture and about how passionate the French are about the game. Yeah, so um, Paris is a little bit different because you've got Racing Metro or, or Racing 92, which is the name change, and you've got Stade Francais. So you've got these two strong clubs in Paris, both who's won the top 14 a couple of times. They, you know, they've started great brands like Eden Park and, um, you know, it's property owners. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a different vibe compared to the South. Where the South is, you've got Toulon, and um, it's, is a, I would say, a little bit more support in the South and Toulon, a little bit more rugby culture, like if you talk about Toulouse and Toulon and things like that. It's an older 
the harbour town and but both are very well supported. The, the owner of Racing 92, I mean, he built an incredible place called Arena 92, you know, in, in, in the middle of Paris. So um, the sport rugby has grown tremendously um, in France. Um, I mean, I think they get televised up until the third or fourth division even. So, But the memories in the players you get to play with, international players and you know, playing in the Heineken Cup and the top 14 and you know, there's a couple of other cups that came part now, um, it's really special. And when you look back at it, you brought back not just memories, but also uh, technically three little French people, given they were born over there. Is there still a, a flicker of French in the kids as well? D definitely. Um, we, we try and make some French jokes and speak, keep up the language a little bit. I was fortunate when we started one or two businesses in France and got a lot of friends still there and um, try and go back there once or twice a year and, you know, keep those relationships going. And, you know, for the kids, it's special. I'll be taking them over to World Cup to experience the World Cup, um, you know, and, you know, see some old friends which they grew up in the schools and where they were born and the doctors and the nurses and all those things. So, and I recently was back to Toulon where the box will be based. It's a phenom phenomenal setup what they've got there. It's world class. And I think that box have positioned themselves at a great place and it's going to be an awesome World Cup. An incredible adventure awaits. You've looked back on a, a wonderful, wonderful adventure. To, uh, winning the top 14, probably the rugby highlight. In terms of the, the life highlights, is there a memory or two you can pick from your time over there that stands out above the others? Um, being able to watch the Monaco Grand Prix a couple of times, uh, Prince Albert, Prince Charlene, they were really kind. They always made it, you know, they hosted the, especially the Springbok rugby players, South African rugby players. Um, so that's special memories to be able to go out to Monaco, um, you know, watch a different sport. And then, you know, being able to have a, you know, being able to play with a great bunch of players together. Um, those are very special memories and, you know, to go on to win um, um, was f uh, incredible. And, and if memory serves, you also met some pretty cool people while you were in France. Yes, uh, 2016, after winning a top 14 final in Barcelona, I camped now. Then the year after that, playing for Geelong, was in the final against Clermont. So then um, Macron, uh, was the year when he became president. And um, before the build up to that, he used sports. So he would come out to some of the games. And the first time he was actually um, came into the locker rooms and he, and I was actually asking one of the play, French players next to me, Sekisa, and, and basically, you know, who's this guy? Is it a new ref? <laughs> and, he, um, and he said, no, this guy's standing to, you know, he's in the top three guys to become president of France. And later that year, we were shaking hands at the French top 14 final against Clermont. Unfortunately, I couldn't win it with two different clubs year on year, but it was great to meet someone like that. And, you know, um, uh, and, you know, even I remember like yesterday, Josh to over, you know, the Fijians they always go down on their knees and greeting and there's still a great pick around that. So that was quite cool to meet uh, Macron and, you know, his support towards rugby and, you know, changing France for the best. So there we go. Did Jean-André Kruger really get Macron elected as president? I'll go a yes. Some wonderful memories of life on and off the pitch with the Rugby Player's Guide to France made just for you for Bright Rock this week with Jean-André looking back extremely fondly on his time in France. Mm -hmm.